I'm get it how I wanna get it, you don't get it. I can do anything, I don't got a limit. I'm gonna make my mind up, I'm committed. It might take some time, I take a minute. I won't give up, I don't give a shit. All right, guys, here we are. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. I'm here today with my man. He is the owner of NT Power. Now listen, this dude right here, he's awesome. Every morning he sends me videos of him doing like <laughs> five mile running, hundreds of push-ups, and he's pushing himself to new levels right now. Total recreation is what I call it. He's reinventing himself. Um, you know, he's been around us now for, you know, the last six months, and I see him every day getting sharper, every day getting hungrier, every day becoming more awake, and that's what you need to do, okay? So this podcast, we're going to bring you a lot of value. Um, he's, he's crushing and killing it. He is a business owner. And by the way, I want to tell you something. If you don't own your own business, you need to treat it, whatever you're doing, like you own your own business. That's the only way you're going to increase your value and you're going to make more money, okay? Am I right? Yep, 100%. You know, because you treated whatever you did before you were an owner like yep. you were an owner. So yes. one day when you own something, bam! That's the way to do it. You're killing it. So yep. uh, so drop some heat. Give us some value. Number one, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from. You're from Ecuador, right? So yes. let's start there. Yep. And uh, then let's move up to what you're doing today and, and how you're killing it and about your family and business and everything. Well, first off, Andy, well, thank you for having me. You bet. It's very important, you know, for us to understand, you know, the background. And that's what makes us who we are, right? Exactly. So for me, I grew up in Ecuador, you know. I came here about uh, 14 years ago uh, to Arizona. And my thing was, it's like opportunity, right? Well, America is so a what lot is Ecuador, of opportunity. What, what is Ecuador like? Like, what is that like? Very poor country. Very poor country. I mean, uh, impoverished, I, I should say. Uh, uh -huh. But um, definitely, is opportunity rare? Is it is it harder to find? It is pretty find? rare, pretty uh -huh. rare. Yeah, it's in South America, so there's not a lot of opportunity. And it's hard to finance stuff. Right? Hard to find. There's no financing. Okay, That's I want everybody problem. to understand something. Okay, yeah. just because we're in America and every, yeah. every United States, <laughs> take it for like, granted. Everybody's like, "Hey, man, it's easy. Just finance it, <laughs> dude." Over there, if you don't have one lump sum, yeah, you don't have cash. You don't get it. You don't get it. So that means you. That means who you are is who you are. That's over right. here, you could see a dude with a private jet and a Ferrari. You yeah. have no idea what's in his bank account. Yeah. Over there, you can tell where someone is based on what they have. Yeah. You know 100%. what I'm saying? Yeah, you see a person in a brand new truck over here. Dude, you don't even know anything about them. Correct. Yeah. So anyways, but I just wanted to say, so you come from a place that, you know, it's very transparent, you know, opportunity, yep. uh, how hard you work. It's very clear what you have. There's probably no middle class. There's probably poor. And then there's people and who are rich. rich. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's right. So, so how old are you? Uh, I'm 36 right now. So 15 yep. years ago, yep. you come here, you're 21 years old. Yep. Okay. Yep. Talk to us. So came came here, you know, uh, because I got married with my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, she's from Arizona. Yeah. And she's the one that really brought me here. And uh, when I got my first job, it was funny because over there, you when you're getting trained to do a job, they don't pay you. You know what I mean? Mm. And here in America, it's like they pay you to get trained. Uh -huh. You know, and to do a job. And then later on, two years later, three years later, if it's a trade, you know, let's say roofing or whatever it may be, you know, you can open your own business. So that's mm. amazing, you know, the opportunity that I saw here in America. That's crazy. He said over there, in, that's just practice. <laughs> yeah, it's just practice. They're like, we're deciding yeah. if while you're trying out yes. if we want to hire you. Yeah. <laughs> so it blew my mind when yeah. I was, like, getting trained. You're like, like, this is great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So then after well, that, what did you, you know, start in? What? Sorry? What did you start in? You came oh, here? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I know it, you're in solar was, today, but like, what did you start in when you came here? Yeah, so it was a mining company here okay. in Arizona. You okay. know, one of the biggest mining, copper mining companies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I know nothing about mining and, and what I was doing there. Uh, I was actually going to college at the time as well. Mm -hmm. So I was just, you know, working full time, going to college full time, and then obviously husband full time too. <laughs> That's awesome, So, man. you know, amazing wife, you know, that took care of all the things that well, I was You got a wasn't. beautiful family. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you, yeah. So three do kids? you? Three yes. kids? Four. Four kids. Four kids. Yeah. Yeah, and they're blonde hair. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, because they take out after the mom. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So anyway, looking at that, you know, I really knew that since the minute I came into America, I knew that I wanted more. You mm -hmm. know, and it wasn't just because of America, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I I I grew up like that, you know, thinking my family. We're business owners, right? So for me, it's like, what do I do? How do I do it? And I knew I needed to learn a trade. So when I started, right after college, I, you know, kept telling my wife, hey, I'm going to go and uh, start my own business. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, you're not ready. And I, you know, the next year, it's like, hey, I want to go and start my own business. She said, no, you're not ready. Up until I was ready. And the truth is, is looking back now, that's the, that's the case. You know, you got to learn a trade. You got to learn something. You know, mm -hmm. you, you've heard that saying, jack of all trades. And it's true. You know, if you focus on too many things, 
You're nothing not good happens. at anything. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens. So that's when I was like, got into solar about mm-hmm. 10 years ago and just didn't never look back, you know, never look back. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments. Tell me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. So you started on the ground. Yep. Knocking doors. Knocking doors. Mm-hmm. Knocking doors. So there's a funny story there uh, because I was working, you know, for, uh, well, I finished, I was working for Wells Fargo. Okay. Uh-huh. And it was funny because like, you know, I was there for a couple of years and I thought I was going to be a banker, big shot. Okay. Uh-huh. And these guys were like, okay, you know, this is a career path, whatever. And one of these days I looked at, um, you know, my boss, like if you walk into a branch and say, who's the head honcho here? That was her. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I just so happened to see her pay stuff. <laughs> and you're like, I don't want to be like, here. And I'm like, I don't want to be here. And I had a buddy of mine that kept calling me, say, hey, you got to come knock doors, you know, for solar. Yeah, you saw <laughs> your destiny. <laughs> I was like, right out of, you know, like five o'clock, you know, clocked out. And I was like, hey, but what, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Okay, I want to I tell everybody something real quick. Number one, um, I want to ask you how it felt going from a secure, okay, guarantee right to knocking doors and giving up your guarantee okay and by the way and and then i want to ask that question then i want to ask you also what did what did people think about you when they started hearing oh you're not at wells fargo anymore what are you doing (laughs) and you're like i'm knocking doors that's crazy yeah okay tell me about that yeah so family gatherings right i mean uh my wife she was against it and but then i told her it's like hey this is where I want to go. You know, I'm a, I'm, I really want to go grow big, you know? And she's like, okay, do it. Finally, you know, she agreed to it. Uh, but everybody but in then, the beginning is a little weird, then right? Then 100%, yeah, like going to family gatherings. I just want people to friends. know that, that when you go for a bigger yes. life, when you go to get in they sales, don't support you. They don't Not support you. It's so important that everybody understands that, that, that he owns a company now, guys. If he would have gotten... When he got his feelings hurt, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that he trusted and he cared about and he loved that told him, like, dude, what are you doing? This is stupid, man. You got a family. You've got kids, dude. You know, you can't be running around with yeah. these kids knocking doors, yeah. man. I mean, w- what happened to Wells Fargo? Yeah. You see what I mean? Exactly. And all of a sudden, dude, they start kind of trying to freak you out, dude, but yeah. you stayed fearless. Yeah, 100%. Hey, guys, the video that you're watching, you're seeing a good friend of mine. He owns a solar installation company called NT Power. If you're in the state of Arizona and you're a sales org and you're not doing business with Indy Power, you see this number below. Call or text now. Write it down now. Reach out to him. They're the best in the game. They're super quick. They're they're just the best. They're a pro and a world full of amateurs. There's no freaking in-between sales reps getting pissed off, customers getting mad at things going wrong. Also, lastly, if you're looking for a sales job and you want to make a lot of money, his team pays really big. They got a great sales org. So guys, kick butt, rock and roll. If you're looking for the killer installations, hit my man up. And if you're looking to kill it in sales, hit my man up. Let's get back to the video. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, we're like, hey, I thought these guys were my best friends, you know, my circle. But again, the more you mm-hmm. grow, the long, lonelier you're going to get, right? Yeah, it's because right. you are not able to, you know, they, it's not that they hate you, but they don't want you to succeed at, at what you're doing, you know? Yeah, or they just... They, they don't want you to do something that they're afraid to do. That's right. Because maybe I'm it. afraid to do it. I'm like, yeah. dude, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Okay, I get that you don't want to do it. But you're not inside of me. You can't see my courage. Correct. And, and truth be told, I, I mean, it, it was a little bit scary, right? I mean, it mm-hmm. was, yeah. right? Because it's yeah, like, that's hey, an important part, too, is that yeah. it was scary. Of course. And that's how I felt. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I got my wife. She's supporting me. Everybody around me is not supporting me. So mm-hmm. what do I do? You know, and that's where you look into mentors. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the one thing I'll have to tell you. Like my first year or two, I really was trying to do it all on my own. I really didn't want to, you know, reach out to mentors. And that's something that we men probably have that Mm -hmm. we don't want to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that changed really the course of my career. And then now, obviously, you know, surrounding myself, we got guys like you and and people that want more out of life. Yeah, people that push you. Yeah, that's a hack Mm -hmm. in life. You know, that's really, that really is. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. true. Yeah, well, there's people that pursue and then the people that back off. Correct. And a lot of people back off. They don't chase. Yeah. And, you know, we're chasers. Yes. So we need a bunch of chasers in the room. <laughs> yeah. We're just all crazy. But if you get a bunch of people that are scared, yes. you know, that are in fear, well, yeah. dude, you're, you need to get out of that room pretty quick or you'll That's be right. doing the same thing. You know what That's I mean? That's right. Um, it's, a, it's a strict nine. You know what I mean? It doesn't take much. Your head, 
is like uh, uh, I heard Jim Rohn say one time, like a cup of coffee. If you take an ounce of strychnine, just a drop, and put it in a cup of coffee, like if you drink that coffee, you're dead. Yeah. Just one drop of strychnine. Well, your mind has sixty to seventy thousand thoughts going through today. Yeah. Most human beings, eighty percent of that's negative. But let's say you find a guy who stuffs together, he's jamming out, he doesn't have the negative mindset. Just put him around a negative person. Let a few of these thoughts enter his yeah. mind. Dude, before too long, that stuff's in there. You don't know it's in there. It, cre- it crept in. It's like the Trojan horse, dude, takes you out. A hundred percent. So it's super important. And I've seen that in my life, you know. Like, I remember when I started Inti, that this was few, a few years after I knew Solar, and I was like, okay, you know, they want to move us to different places. Mm-hmm. I had moved and started new new branches for this company. But then finally, Kaylee said, you know, my wife, she's like, let's just go back to Arizona. And, and start our own thing you mm-hmm. know so that's how Inti was born and I'm gonna go a little more into that like why we started Inti and stuff yeah, like that yeah, but, do your deal. but the main thing was it's like for me really I saw you know the gap that there was in the industry if that makes sense you know because of the quality people that we bring into um, whatever industry this could be cars this could be roofing Anything. whatever it is yeah exactly if you are, you know, a little bit better, you know, just go the extra mile, mm-hmm. okay? Because the average Joe is not going to go the extra mile. Mm-hmm. If you go the extra mile, you're already top 10, top five of your company mm-hmm. right away. You know what I mean? And people are going to look at you, okay? And that's the thing that I saw. It's like, okay, well, I apply that as, you know, working mm-hmm. for a company, mm-hmm. learning the trade yeah. uh, or, or the business. And then later on, you know, I'm like, okay, I can do this as well with Inti because mm-hmm. the majority of solar contractors, um, they're not really trying, you know. That's facts. Yeah, yeah. So um, your wife, is she more like passive, like, hey, you know, like maybe we shouldn't do this, or is she more like press you? She she used to be uh, pretty passive before. Uh-huh. But then after that, like that, she's the one that actually told us to start Inti. You yeah. know what I mean? So she's the one. So who, she's, she's the one pushing. She's getting more yeah. ballsy. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that, that that's what it was, you mm-hmm. know, because when I, I actually quit Wells Fargo, it was one night that I wanted mm-hmm. to come back. It was snowing, I remember, in Utah, Salt Lake City. It was December. It was mm-hmm. snowing. And uh, basically, you know, I wanted to come back. It was 6 o'clock. And I'm like, I'm not going to knock doors. It's snowing, you know. And guess what she told me? What? She's like, you're not coming home without a deal. Dude, that sounds like my wife. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that's a good wife. Yes. Did you yeah. bring home a deal? I did. <laughs> See, there was a time, dude, that I was driving home, yeah. and literally um, I had a horrible day. I called my wife. It's like 7 o'clock in the yeah. afternoon, and I, I was in the car business when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And I'd been at work since 8 and 7 o'clock at night. Yeah. I didn't have a deal. Took swings at a bunch. Just wouldn't yeah. put together. Um, financing was falling through, just yeah. all kinds of issues, one-legged yeah. deals, no wife. I was like, dude, I'm going home, man. One of those. One yeah. Of and she goes, uh, no. She goes, you, well, number one, she goes, you're not bringing that attitude home. Yeah, I can yeah. already tell. I can already tell you're irritated. I can already tell. And I know you either need to go one or two places. You go back to work or you go to the gym. Yeah. But because we need to make money, you're going back to work. <laughs> and I said, yeah. okay. And I went back, and I, I hated that she made me go back. I I was furious. It wasn't an okay. I was like, dude, you know what? That's bullshit. And I hung up the phone. But I turned around. Yeah. And I went back to work. What's crazy is I had a guy come in, him and his wife, they're looking at a car. Yeah. And then while he was looking at it, she was also like, Hey, what's that? And then I ended up selling them two cars. Yeah. And I remember when I was driving home, I was gonna call her. No, I was afraid to call her. Oh, because because she's always right. Yeah, that's right. And she's like did you sell one? And I'm like, babe, like, what do you mean? I'm like on my way. And she's like, did you sell one? And I said, I sold two. And she goes, I told you who's always right. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, but no, she's always right. Yeah. She's always right. But dude, Hey, that, is why you are who you are because you got a w- good woman behind you, which is why anybody watching this, you need to be a good person. You need to take care of your personal life. You need to understand this great personal lives create great, great businesses. Yeah. People with shitty personal lives, they ruin their business every single time. Yeah. They have no idea how important it is when you're in a relationship to make sure that's healthy, to make sure you pour a lot into it so that that person can develop with you to push you in times like that. 100%. And it's all about, like, I like what you always say, it's human excellence, right? It's, that's what we look for, yeah. you know? And not for other people, it's for you. And yeah. if you're that, guess what? You're going to attract that too. 
Yeah. You know, part of my story, you know, without with with that, and maybe I should say it because it's pretty cool. So it was snowing. I was knocking doors, and this guy opens the door, right? And mm -hmm. he says, "What in the heck are you doing out here, man? It's a blizzard. It's snowing. What are you doing here? Come on in." He gave me hot chocolate. You know, he's like, "Dude, whatever you're doing, I want to hear it because mm -hmm. you're so passionate about it." <laughs> So <laughs> then, like, my wife's on my ass. <laughs> yes, yes, a hundred percent. And then I, I just sat down with him, his wife, you know, and I showed him what I was doing. Right in this case, was solar, and then uh, yeah, got the deal. So it was, it was pretty incredible. Do you feel the same way when you called your wife? She's yeah. like, did you get one? <laughs> yes. You're like, yeah. Damn it. Yeah, because I was trying to quit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, dude, dude. I love what he just said. So everybody needs to write that down. I was trying to quit. Yeah. Okay, surround yourself with people that when you're trying to quit, they won't let you quit. Yeah. They said, nah, I'm not going to let you quit, man. No. No, that's good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what does NT stand for? So NT is on God for the Incan like, civilization culture in South America. Okay. It's kind of like the Aztecs or uh -huh. the Mayans. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, they praise the God. You know, it was the sun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. So that's NT, and obviously yep. you're from Ecuador, right? Yep, yep. So, and then... Um, you 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 created when you started NT Power. You created an installation company. Correct. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. So so and I've obviously you've sold solar. So you worked with these installation companies, yep. and I think you talked about the gap. Yep. You learned that there was a big disconnect, right? Correct. Um, why did you not instead of st and I know you have a sales org now, and you you guys sell yep. right, and and that's great, and you're yep. a great leader there. But let's talk about. Why did you start on the install side? Because a lot of people, they say, say it's easier to start on the sell side. 100% it's easier. So, so yeah. why did you pick the install side? And, and obviously, you're, and you're killing it in the install side now, but why, why, why the install side? Because I saw that that was like the highest barrier of entry, you know, and something that I've realized, you know, mm -hmm. throughout my life, really, when it's harder that's where the money's at or the opportunity. I want right? everybody to realize what he said, the highest barrier of entry. Yep. 99% of the people enter the lowest barrier of Correct. entry. Okay. That means the people that really don't have to have any skill, they don't have to have anything, yep. and everybody can get in. Th that's right. right. Yep. Yeah, yep. the highest level of entry means that you got to learn a lot. Yes. You got to go through hell. You got to yep. figure it all out. You get a lot of people together because I'm not going to do it all right. In oh, yeah, yeah. You got to build a big team. Installers, COOs, you know, I mean, like dude, everybody. Expenses, yeah. trucks, equipment, yep. all yep. this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go back to the highest because you're actually the first person I've ever heard say. I would say the lowest barrier of entry, but like because that's what most people get in on on sales. Correct. It's because it's a low barrier. Correct. Um, but you said highest barrier of entry. Okay, so you get in. Yeah. You you buy a truck. Yeah. It's just you. You start to find some guys. That's right. So I got a, a friend of mine, uh, and and he basically was an electrician, you know, to mm -hmm. start. And I say, hey man. Uh, he had a little bit of experience, well, some experience in solar, uh -huh. uh, more on the commercial side, but I wanted to, re you know, really focus on the residential side. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really said, okay, let's go, bro. So it, it's crazy how it happened. All, all these things came together. Yeah. And I really, you know, if I sit down here and I don't mention God, uh -huh. I would be, you know, I'm not your guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, because the dots don't connect without God. Correct. Guys, I want everybody to understand something. I was talking to Steve Weatherford yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. If you look him up, NFL football player, Jack Dude. I saw that, he, yeah. He's a killer, man. But he he was talking about, like, dude, there's no way yeah. that, like, my life is the way it is. There's, yeah. no, he's, there's no way. There's no way you could do what you did. There's no way that all these people just fell into place. Yeah. doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. Okay? Like, the dots are all connected by God. Yeah. They're all connected. Yeah. The good dots, the bad dots, all the dots. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and what happened with him, you know, because obviously I had a sales background and he mm -hmm. was really the construction guy. Mm -hmm. I had offered him a job already. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, hey, dude, like, come on down, whatever. He said, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then it was a Thursday, I remember. He says, uh, he calls me out of the blue, you know, and say, hey, is that job still open? I said, why? You know, I thought you'd turn it down. He said, yeah, but I just got fired. Mm. You know what I mean? And really it wasn't because of him or anything. Just, you know, that company wasn't doing well. Yeah. You know, so laid off really, you yeah. know, so then he came on board. Yeah, but you got a guy. Exactly. You want him. Yeah. <laughs> he gets fired. Yeah. Now he's like, I gotta. Yeah. And you're not even making money yet. No, not and yet. And now you hire him. Yep. It's like, yep. everybody see the pressure? That's what he was talking about, high barrier of interest. Yes. Yes. Like upfront expenses. You know, I call it risk inversion. Yeah. Like a lot of people, they don't they want the lowest risk with the highest upside correct right yeah. 
Like, who doesn't want that, right, by the way? I mean, like, we, I'm, yeah. I, I mean, I want that. I'm yeah. always like, dude, if I can put a dollar in, yeah. I'm cool. But you don't get shit with a dollar. Okay? <laughs> but, but so my lowest risk, highest upside. This high risk, long-term game upside. Mm -hmm. So it's not even quick upside. No. Nope. It's long, because, you know, you got to buy trucks. You got to hire people. Yeah. I mean, you got to put millions up front. And, and that's the thing that, you know, I realized right, right away. And I told my wife, because she actually was the one told, telling me, so I was like, if we're doing this, this is a long term play for us. Mm. You're not doing this for like a couple of years. That's a power play, too. Exactly. So since day one, you know, every little thing that we did was actually, you know, long term decisions. Mm. You know, every single partnership that we have, it's long term. We don't mm. want to, you know, we don't want to bring you in and we hire for life, kind of like what you do. Mm -hmm. Same stuff, you know what I mean? So for us, it was very important to bring that culture in from the beginning, you know? And, and I see this, like, for example, like these installers, specifically in, in solar, right? Yeah. And this happens in every trade. But in solar, these guys see the opportunity, you know, lowest, you know, low hanging fruit in Texas. Florida or they want to go to, you know, California, you name it. Mm -hmm. And and as a sales company, like if you're a sales guy, it's a lot easier to go everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. But as an installer, it's impossible. You can't do it. You know why? We, I, I've seen it actually. You know what I mean? I've seen these construction companies in solar specifically go out of business because they want to conquer too much. Yeah, they're and chasing. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. because they can, if you cannot hack it, in your hometown, right? Yeah, in your yeah, home you market, sure can't do it on the then road. you don't have, yeah, you have no business going into another market. Mm -mm. And that's the thing that I can tell you. It's like more and more uh, people are finding out, you know, if I'm going to partner with a company, I want to mm -hmm. make sure that they're local, that they know their, tra they know the inspectors, well, they know the people in the city, they know the people in the utilities, they yeah. go and talk to them, you know, yeah. by name, they know them by name. You know what I mean? So stuff moves so much faster. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so that's why you dominate Arizona. Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah, I love it because you could try to take down three states or yeah. even ten states. Yeah. Or you said, you know, we talked about being a master of none. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah. you mastering Arizona. Yeah, and this guy's coming here and oh, we're in 15 states. Dude, I hear know? this every day. We're in 39 states. <laughs> I'm like, dude, look at their bottom line. They're broke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, You could yeah. be in one state and be rich, yeah. but you're in 39 states Let's and you're broke. Let's chill for a second, yeah. Dude, it's an ego play, man. I Listen, know, dude, dude, there was this guy, um, when I was younger, yeah. I, I ran dealerships. I'd ran car dealerships, and uh, the owner had an ego. Yeah. And every freaking time, dude, that somebody would throw an opportunity out of him, yeah. he would take it. Yeah. You know, they'd be like, I'm just giving an example. Let's say we have, you know, three Ford stores, yeah. two Kia stores, you know, six Chevy stores. I mean, dude, we got a big fleet of stores here. Yeah. This guy's like, dude, I can get you a Yamaha point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can open a yeah. Yamaha dealership. Yeah. He's like, hell yeah. Dude, now I'm going to have Yamaha. Dude, <laughs> now we got to freaking take all the inventory. Yeah. We got to get a building. Yeah. We got to hire somebody to run it. We got to get salespeople. We got to hire parts department. We got to hire a service department. Service, yep. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I don't... All because he gets to say we have a Yamaha store now? It's ridiculous. No ways, man. And, and it happens. Say no so we can focus on what we're good at and increase the profits there. Dude, if you increase the profits on what you're currently doing, a lot of the times you don't have to think about other stuff. If you took the energy of all this other thinking yeah. that you were doing yeah. and you just focused on what you were doing, you would kill it. No, it's the most powerful, powerful word Dude. in the English language. And you can't. In Spanish you, language. <laughs> well, in any angle, you can't learn yeah. until you get mature. Yep, yep, 100%. You know? And, 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 and that's the thing, you know what I mean? If I had like a dollar for every time somebody's offered me another business venture, mm. you know, I would be a millionaire. Be a millionaire you know? yeah. yeah, exactly. Because they see you, you know, this started to happen to me within, you know, basically about two, two years ago mm -hmm. when people just come on the door and say, hey, man, you got money. Well, I know, I know uh, roofing, say. And so Everybody roofing, yeah, wants exactly. a partner in something. Exactly. And I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I can't do it. I yeah. can't do it. Because if, if I would have taken, you know, I'm a roofing and solar or, or solar and HVAC. You'd have ruined your name. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because your name wouldn't be as strong as it is because it'd be diluted down and watered down because of these other areas. A hundred percent. Yeah. I tell our guys all the time, man. I say, listen, dude, I see potential in a lot of companies and yeah. a lot of businesses, yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. But, dude, we don't want to tie our name to that, man. No. Listen, we're good at what we do. Yeah. Let's keep kicking ass. Yeah. And they're always like, I know, but speed. And I said, yeah, speed is good, but also yeah. we're in it for the long game, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, 
dude. But anyways, but I love that. And, and, and this, there's something, you know, that again, you know, it's nothing against, against uh, speed, mm -hmm. but there's something that I've learned over like the last 12 months, which is slow and steady wins the race. You know, mm -hmm. there is something to learn about that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm all about, you know, winning, all about, you know, rocking yeah, and rolling. Fast wins, uh -huh. Exactly. But at the same time, you know, if you're not doing it right, you're just building a house of, of cards. You know, that's you're what you're give doing. You're going to give it all back. Yes. Yeah, dude. Yes. And, and I, the, the impatience, the aggressive impatience I have yeah. of trying to grow fast, yeah. I would rather deal with that and grow right. And because look, dude, the only way to grow is through processes. Yeah. Processes and people, yep. right? That's the only way to grow. But if you do spike your growth and you start killing it, yep. and dude, you don't have processes and the right people, that's right. You're just gonna give it all back, yep. you know. Yep. And dude, that's the worst feeling in the world because I've done it, yeah. And it sucks. Yep. It's very humbling to give it all back, yeah. And to be like, dude, this sucks, man. Yeah, and, and you know the 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 same principle is true on the other side, which you're talking about, like somebody offering you dealership, same thing on our side, like we mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, what products we carry, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, what inverter, what solar mm -hmm. panels, stuff like that. We only have one. Mm -hmm. We don't offer three, five, mm -hmm. seven, because we go and say, okay, this is the one that It's we're gonna simplified. partner with. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Not only simplifying, but also like making it, uh, <clears throat> so the word an expert said that, because we're actually the one who's installing it, right? Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> Things change so fast, and that's yeah. the thing, you know what I mean? Cheers. So we are a Tesla, you know, premier uh, installer here in the state of Arizona. So let's talk about that. Yeah. Tell me what that is. So what that is is they don't give it to just anybody. I think mm -hmm. there's only two in, Yeah, because in the state everybody's, of everybody's using you to install. If you're in the state of Arizona, yep. you guys already know you need to be install doing your installs with them, anti-power. Yep. Um, but let's talk about the Tesla. Yeah. So again, you know, it wasn't easy to get it. You know, you had to be so many years in business. They look at your financials, make sure that you're a stable company. Uh, but more than anything is that you're actually, you know, living by the same principles and core values that they have. You know, mm. they really protect their branding mm -hmm. and, and how they carry themselves. Right. So <clears throat> to be able to get that was pretty hard. But at the end of the day, we saw the upside because one thing is, you know, uh, the inverter is just like basically the device that converts the energy so that you can use it, right? Mm -hmm. But really uh, what's happening right now, it's the batteries, you know what I mean? So there is a technology that's coming out and it's going to change the game. Not only in solar, but for homeowners, like people are going to want these batteries. Like mm -hmm. I talked to a couple people because they just came out with it, you know, and these batteries are just, again, people are going to love them because you're basically going to be off grid at that point, you know, what quote that, unquote. What upgrade. does that mean? Like so, for anybody that doesn't understand. So what that means is just, you know, you don't have to really rely on the utility, you know, to give you the right credits or anything like that. You know, mm -hmm. the utility is basically just there just in case mm -hmm. you need it. But really, you're going to be doing self-consumption. We see, you know, for example, I don't know if you've seen the F-150, the new Lightning one, mm -hmm. that is able to actually charge your house or be, be, use as a backup. Oh, wow. the, the Teslas are going to be able to do the same thing. They're coming out with that. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that we saw, and we're like, okay, Tesla's like really the, the partner that we have to be with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we saw that like a couple years ago. And we started, you know, conversations to the point that we're in right now. And, and that's the one thing I'll tell you. It's like a lot of people think that, uh, you know, oh, this company came out of nowhere. You know, Inti is taking over. Why? Oh, that was fast, you know. But it wasn't fast. There's a lot of years mm -hmm. in the making and in a lot the building. Of grit. Exactly. Hey, guys, the video that you're watching, you're seeing a good friend of mine. He owns a solar installation company called Inti Power. If you're in the state of Arizona and you're a sales org and you're not doing business with Indy Power, you see this number below. Call or text now. Write it down now. Reach out to him. They're the best in the game. They're super quick. They're, ju they're just the best. They're a pro in a world full of amateurs. There's no freaking in between sales reps getting pissed off, customers getting mad, things going wrong. Also, lastly, if you're looking for a sales job and you want to make a lot of money, his team pays really big. They got a great sales org. So guys, kick butt, rock and roll. If you're looking for the killer installations, hit my man up. And if you're looking to kill it in sales, hit my man up. Let's get back to the video. But what kind of owner do you, what kind of grit do you got to have to be an owner? Oh, like freaking like, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's yeah, a lot like I want you to share that. Like I want you to really share that though, man. Like, yeah. you know, cause I love what I do. Yeah. I love being an owner. Yeah. Dude, people have, it's hell. <laughs> I mean, yes. it's beautiful, right? <clears throat> it's not bad. No. But it's it's truly hell. It really is. It, it, I mean, it's, listen, I'm grateful, yeah. right? but I, 
listen, and people say, well, why would, why would you say that? Because I have, we have 100 employees that we have to make sure we take care of all <clears> of them <throat> and their families. Yeah. See, when it's just you, yep. you don't have to worry about it. See, I always tell people this. They're like, yeah, but, dude, you're making all the money. Dude, yeah. listen, when, okay, if you're a good owner, yeah. you're always worried about your people. 100%. They have a family. They have kids. You know, they have dreams. They have goals. Your job is to help them get their dreams. You want to get yeah. yours. I mean, it's hell, man. I mean, you know, if, if business is slow for a minute, if something isn't right, if there's an off month, it doesn't matter what it is. There's two things that have to happen. You have to get into everybody. You got to find the hole, find the problems. You got to fix them. You got to get the team remotivated. You got to move to another level. You also got to make sure that you fix stuff fast, yep. you know, because paychecks got to keep coming. Some people get paid salaries. Some people get paid off commissions. Yeah. You know, it's like, dude, it's like, if you really care about your team, it's like going through hell to a lot of dark nights. Yeah. You yeah. Know? A lot of yeah. The dark, dark nights. I want to ask yeah. you something too. Okay. So me and my wife don't fight a lot. Yep. Okay. We do fight a lot, <laughs> but we don't fight a lot about each other. We yeah. fight a lot about other people. We are always problem solving. Mm. Me and her are gotcha. best friends. We're best friends. Yeah. We're totally, the me and her, if we didn't have a business, we'd get along just like this. Yep. But because all day long we're problem solving things in the business, yeah. Yeah. it's like, we're opinionated between different things that are happening with different people yeah. or different processes. Yep. So we're fighting about different people. Yep. Okay. Yep. My son's like, mom, dad, please stop fighting. We're not <laughs> fighting us. We're fighting about him. You see? Yeah. So again, I said, going through hell, we fight because of our hundred employees. Yeah. Because we're trying to figure out how to take care of them. So yeah. being an entrepreneur, not That's being right. an entrepreneur. Patrick Bidevi. Yeah, you don't have to fight about anybody. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can take care of yourself. You can be a good example. You can be a good leader. But when you go home, you don't have to write 99 checks. Yeah. 100%. You know, if that's how many people are in the company. Yeah, and, and you know, like, th there's a big thing, and I, I think there's a huge sh shift that's happening. It's a lot of people that want to own their own businesses and stuff like that. It's like you want to be a part of something big, which is great. I understand mm -hmm. that. But you can totally be an entrepreneur. You yes. know what I mean? Dude, and make a lot of freaking money. Four out of five millionaires work for someone else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, and by the way, most people that are a millionaire by working for someone else yeah. found someone or a company that was going up and they said, oh, I'm not, not going to jump on that and ride it. I'm going to jump on that and I'm going to make it better. Yep. I'm going to jump on it. I'm going to blow that guy up. I'm going to jump on that. I'm going to explode that. I'm going to bring new energy into that. I'm going to bring new life into that. And then they ride up with that person, help blow them up. And they get taken care of too. Just like in your company, you know, like whether you're hiring or not, at any point in time, yeah. you're always looking for some talented, hungry yes. man or woman to yep. come in who's ready to kick butt. And yep. even if you weren't hiring, if that person showed up, you say, dude, you're hired. Yep. Because you're always looking for 100%. That. And that person can make a million dollars working for you. But a lot of people think, hey, man, I got to open my own business. And again, that's not true in every country. Those stats that you just talked about, that's here in America. Mm. You know, other countries, if you want to make money, you have to start your own business. You have to. There's mm. no way, you yeah. know. The other thing, Companies too. Companies don't pay out big They like don't that. pay out big over there. Correct. Nobody does. Like you, like you said, yeah. only a few people that are rich, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that is like here. Since, you know, people know, okay, this guy can probably, you know, I've taught him everything he knows, and he probably is better than me now, mm -hmm. you know, so he could totally go and start his own company. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give him some equity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that happens a lot here in America, too. Yeah. You know, so that there's no reason for you to go and try to go on a, on a uphill battle, you mm -hmm. know, because starting your own business, you know, it is an uphill battle it for is. years, you know, for like at least three years, minimum. Listen, does it ever end? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> My wife, I was talking to her yesterday, yeah. right? And she goes, I think life is a hoax. I think they're baiting us. <laughs> it's the carrot on the yes. donkey. Yeah, that's right. And we're chasing this carrot. Yeah. And one day we're going to be dead. Yeah. And the carrot's going to be in the coffin. That's true. And then we're going to go right down in this coffin. Yeah. And she's like, so what does that mean, Andy? She goes, that means that it's not, when we were broke, yep. we wanted to be rich. Yep. And we thought when we would get rich that we would feel a certain way in our heart or we would feel a sense of success yeah. and we would feel different. Yeah. So we fought our whole life to become rich. Yep. And we became rich yep. or rich to our standards. Yep. And it didn't you, change. You are rich. <laughs> well, it didn't change anything. Yeah. 
but it didn't change anything. Yeah. Just, I'm being for real. Yeah. It didn't change anything. Yeah. My heart doesn't feel any different. I don't feel the success. I feel the success when I help people. Boom. Yeah, so like, it's it's not it's not whether you're broke or whether you're rich. It's who you become. So I think that, I think that this journey, I said going through hell, taking care of all these people, doing all these things, being the owner just means you're an ultra leader. That means that look, in the rules of leadership. Rule number one is self lead. If you can lead yourself, you are a leader. Rule number two, lead others. Now once you can lead yourself, you can be responsible to lead others. Now, if you're really good, then you'll go to step three, which is creating leaders that build more leaders. Yep. And and those people should own companies. Yep. Because you can't own a business and work in the business forever. Yep. You must own, work on, and then people work in, and you must create layers of leadership in an organization. Yep. And so I think the ultra leaders end up owning their businesses. Yep. And the ones that aren't ultra leaders, they don't end up owning their businesses. Yep. They end up working for someone else because there's only a certain part of leadership that you have to go through. Yeah. So you know? I, I, Andrew Carnegie talks about that, about wealth, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he uh, I read a lot, a lot of uh, about his life, mm -hmm. you know, I've read. And uh, he actually has a commandment of a wealthy person, basically, you know, and it talks about that, that, you know, not everybody has the ability to create wealth. That's just reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so... Not everybody has the, the ability to be a business owner. Let, let's kind of translate that into being a business owner, right? Because you can create wealth if you are in a good team, right? Mm -hmm. But it's about being a business owner. So then he talks about, you know, if you're being given that ability, you know what I mean? That wealth is not yours, mm -hmm. you know? You've just been, you know, basically. A steward. Exactly. You're mm -hmm. a steward. You're a steward. Exactly. Like, like I was talking to Steve Weatherford yesterday. We are talking about God. God gave you talents. He's yeah. letting you steward these talents yes. on earth. Yes. He's letting you steward this love. He's letting yes. you steward these things. He, yes. he gave them to you. They're his. He owns them. Yep. He, he gave them to you. Yep. Yeah. But, no, I, I, I totally agree. And I think that's the reason why you're killing it is because you're a really good leader. But also, you're, you're grit. Right. And I, I asked that. I said, hey, how hard is it to own your own business to have grit? I, <laughs> I, I truly will think that, you know, yeah. the st basically you don't ever let yourself quit. Everybody gets to a point at some point every year where they say, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to do this no more. And most people throw the towel in and walk away because it's easy. But the ones like us were like, no, nah. no, nah, dude, no ways. I'll yeah. die. And truly, I could be hospitalized and die yeah. before I'll quit because I'm just not going to quit. Yeah. Like, it's not an option. Yeah. Right. See, so there's two people in this room. <clears throat> One says, dude, if I got to be hospitalized and could die, yeah. no ways. I'm out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. And then the other goes, dude, you could be hospitalized and die. And they say, totally worth it. I yeah. knew the cost when I signed up. Yeah. My, my team's worth it. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, and, and, you know, actually, my dad told me this, you know, he's like, you start your own business, your first business, you know, uh, he was like, you know, just so you know, you're no longer a sales guy, you're no longer a, you know, construction guy, you're no longer anything, you're a business owner, you're going to take care of these people, and you don't have days off anymore. Mm. He told me that. He yeah, said, no more uh, holidays, baby. No more holidays, you're yeah. always on, my friend. So if you really want that life, which is great, you know, because he, he was a business owner, too, uh, he said... Perfect, but just so you know, you're not gonna have that work-life balance, right? There yeah. is no more balance. There is not. Yeah. And, and and you know, one of my mentors actually just you know came out with this, and it's really it's really cool because he goes and says, you know, everybody talks about balance, but there's really never balance, right? I'm here talking to you right now. I'm not with my wife. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not I'm not talking to my COO right now about the new process or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm really with you. Mm -hmm. So what what what's balance? You know what I'm saying? So well, I was t uh, me and my wife. We live in a, a place in, in Scottsdale, Arizona. We, we're, we're driving through this place where the retired people live, yeah. right? And there's all these gardens outside. Yeah. And they, they plant their tomatoes and their cucumbers and all their stuff. Yep. These people work their whole life. Yep. One day waiting to retire yep. so they can just, you know, go do what they want. And mm -hmm. then when they retire, they don't know what to do. Yep. 
so they open these little gardens and yeah. they do all these things and yeah. they plant stuff and they walk their dogs and next thing you see them you're pushing their dogs in strollers and you're like you're like dude like it's a hoax <laughs> listen yeah you didn't think when he retired that you wouldn't know what to do, so now you're buying poodles, pushing your doggy in a stroller down the road, <laughs> trying to go back to treating it like a baby. You're always serving somebody, yeah. Well, the deal is, is that, yeah. is that so my goal is, is that if you want to live the longest life, like, don't stop solving problems. Exactly. Don't stop solving. Don't let this thing, you know, slow down. Don't let this thing get dull. Keep your edge. We're, um, we're humans. We're creators. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We have to continue to create. So solving problems, that's creating, yeah. right? Because you have to create that solution. Yeah. So I've seen it. When people stop creating, that's when they die. Even mm -hmm. if they're alive for the next 20, 30 years, you know, but they, they just die. Yeah. Well, guys, listen, super important. Number one, um, where can people follow you on social media? If they want to DM you, ask you any questions. Yeah. So it's John, uh, J-O-N underscore Clavijo, C-L-A-V-I, V -I, as in Victor, I -J -O. Uh, and Victor, I-J-O. We'll put Instagram. that up on the screen because yep. that was yep. long. Yep. Okay. And then, um, but they can find you on Instagram? Yep. Yep. Okay. Guys, he's out of Arizona. You guys, he's amazing. Obviously, I'm only around people that are just winners, that are killing it, that are crushing it. Um, I like people that, you know, have good families. If they have a family, they're taking good care of them. You know, every morning he's sending me videos, which is accountability. I'm running, I'm working out, I'm doing all this stuff. And he doesn't have to. He wants to because he's like, dude, listen. He's like, we're going to kill this today. This is the kind of circle that, that you want to find. This is kind of the brotherhood that you want to find. And um, if you're in the solar industry, if you're in it, yep. okay, and you do have a company, okay, and you're in a sales org, and you're in Arizona, you need to reach him 911. Okay. Secondly, if you're wanting to get in sales or if you're currently in solar sales, I will tell you he is an installer. He has a sales org. His guys get paid very quickly. One of the reasons why people don't like to sell solar is because in the past, sometimes it could take up to 90 days to yep. get paid. It's just the truth. They sell something, they got to install it. Then the check comes in. Um, his, he's the sales guy and the installer. He's all in house in one. And you know, within two weeks you can get a check. The customers are taken care of fast, very quick. Yep. So crazy. So you guys need to also reach out to him, okay? Which, I mean, there's going to be a link in the description box below where you guys um, can reach out to him. I'll put the number below so you guys can text him. But I just want to tell you, man, we always get together. Every time he's out here, we shoot a podcast together. Um, we kick butt. I want you guys to have a blessed day. I want you to think about some things that he said during this podcast. You know, he dropped a lot of little gold nuggets. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one that really stuck with me, he said, my wife wouldn't let me quit. Um, I love that. Sometimes... Um, I think there's a lot of men that could not handle my wife. And I mean that like she's very direct, very stern. You know, they'd be like, dude, I'm not putting up with that. She's never let me quit. She she will not let me talk negative. She won't let me become who I'm not. She won't let me make decisions based off money. You know, it does. She's she's not afraid. Yeah. You know, I invested 250 grand in something. She's like, dude, why are the money? Listen, if you're going to do it with it, why are the money? Okay, but also like, oh, we're gonna do business with these guys. Oh, you can make a hundred dollar, a hundred million dollar deal. I don't know about them. I don't like them. Well, we'll piss them off first. See how they are when when they get mad. How do they act? How do we know who they are? Dude, don't do business with those people. I don't care how much money we can make. We don't need that kind of stress in our life. Yep. Like that's what I mean by don't make decisions based off money. Like yep. she's always about like we are on a path to do people or do life. Uh, or do our life with people who are like us or yep. like minded or who can take us to new levels. Yeah. We don't need this drama. We don't need this stress. We don't want that extra money. If if I have to give up my peace and walk around and be around people that I don't like to make money, I would rather be broke. There's good money and bad money. Yeah. yeah. And so that's my wife. Like yeah. she helps me with that, you know. Yeah. So I just want to say anybody, um, take your wife with you. Make sure you're, you're, you're you know, he came from Ecuador. He said you can't have anything. You're the rich or you're poor. There's no financing. He's in the States now. He's got resources like no other. If you're in the States... Like, dude, like, come on, man, wake up. The difference between rich people and poor people is resourcefulness. Just wake and you've up. been really <laughs> resourceful since you got here. Yeah. And that's why you've grown this big business. So, Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate it, dude. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next podcast. 
Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon. I got lessons, lessons to give them. Think the masters open and wishing, thinking, and driven, and cutting the ribbons off.